All right, everybody. Today we're going to work on reviewing how to solve with matrices or solve systems of equations using matrices. And since it's review, I'm not going to do a whole brand new series of questions. Um, I'm actually just going to review ones that we've already done. Um, these would be back in your notes if you were going to try to find them. Um, this was back in, gosh, I think it was chapter, looks like chapter three. Um, so if you needed to go back to chapter three, you could find it. You could look these up. You probably have these same notes. Um, so with that idea, um, here's the idea, right? System of equations, uh, 5x plus y is 0 and 5x plus 2y is 30. We want to solve this. And yes, we could solve it a variety of ways, but matrices is just another way to solve. Um, you might remember that we could write a matrix. I'm going to use a highlighter tool, right? So we could take this matrix and we could write it like this. Um, this is considered a 2 by 3 matrix, 2 rows and 3 columns. Uh, with that in mind, um, here are the goals and what you're allowed to do with matrices. Um, there were three rules, and there are these three bullet points here. Um, you're allowed to switch any two rows. Literally, just pick up the first and put it in the second. The second could go back in the first and vice versa. You're allowed to multiply any row by a constant. Um, it can be a fraction, a decimal, a negative, a positive. It doesn't matter. And you're allowed to add one row to another row. And you're allowed to do these rules in combination, which is how we can ultimately get this. As an answer, um, the idea here is that we have a series of ones on a diagonal and we have zeros in the opposite corners. Um, when you have that and you find that, you'll remember that X is A and Y is B or whatever those values are. So that's the idea besides a matrix. So with the idea that you could find your notes and um, that you could pretty easily recall most of this information, I'm going to remind you of one question we most likely did together. Um, it was 9x minus 2y is 5, and 3x plus 7y is 17. There's probably an answer out there. Um, and with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at how we would accomplish this. Um, first and foremost, just change in colors, I would do 9, negative 2, and 5, 3, 7, and 17. Remember, we're doing the coefficients to the left of this vertical line right here. And to the right of the vertical line, we're going to go ahead and do the answers, right? The 5 and the 17. With that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at what we did. So this original problem was written here in black. Um, and my first step is to make the bottom left-hand corner into a zero. And it's easy enough to do that with a nine above it and a three below. Um, I just triple it, um, actually triple it with a negative three. So I guess negative triple it and then add them together because I'm allowed to add. And by the way, if you're allowed to add, you're allowed to subtract. So same concept here. Um, but with that in mind, we went ahead and did negative three R sub two plus r sub 1, and we put that in the r sub 2, and look here, we get the 0. Okay, cool. So once we have the 0, now we're going to make this number into a 1. All right, so we're going to make it with a negative 1. We're going to do that by multiplying negative 23 by its reciprocal, and negative 1 23rd. So we're going to do that. We're going to put it right back. We're in r2. We're going to put it back in r2, which is fine. So we do that, and... Basically, that's just like a giant distributive property problem, right? So it's just like this the whole way through that bottom row. And we get this thing in orange. And now the next step is, since we have 0 and 1, by the way, we now know that's the smiley face you might remember. We now know that y is 2. So we already know half our answer. And if we really, really wanted to, we could stop and just use substitution and figure out the rest. But the whole point here, I think, is to find a different technique. So with that in mind, we're now going to go ahead and find this x value, and we're going to try to find that x value and make it 1. If we make it 1, that just means divide by 9 or multiply by 1 ninth. You see that here. So multiply the whole top row by 1 ninth. That's what that's going to look like, and here's how we represent that with symbols. When we do that, we get this thing in purple. Where now we have three of the four things that we want. We have the zero, we have the combination, sorry, we have the diagonal of ones. So now we just need to make that negative two ninths into a zero. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and modify the second row. You notice how we're messing around with the second row here, right? We're taking r sub two and we're multiplying it by two ninths. That's the opposite of negative two ninths. If they're opposites, we can then add them together and we're gonna replace it and put it in row one. So doing all of that stuff is gonna go ahead and give us a, one, a zero in that spot. We now have our diagonal ones, we have our zeros, 
and we have our second smiley face. Second smiley face, of course, means we have our second answer, x is 1, y is 2, and done. So that is a brief reminder of how to solve with matrices. Uh, the key takeaway here is that there are three matrix rules. You could switch any two rows. You can multiply any row by a constant, and you can add run one row to another. Um, your goal is to get a diagonal of ones with zeros in the opposite spaces. And we did learn that if you can do a two by three matrix, then you could do a three by four matrix in bigger. Um, next time we talk, we're gonna talk about three by four matrix matrices. So good luck solving two by three matrices.